disaster in Japan. A lot of developments to report, in fact. A government official out and out said there is no end in sight to this disaster. Radiation levels in nearby seawater spiked again to more than 3,000 times the normal level. Fresh reports from the EPA and others in this country show traces of radiation from that Japanese plant have migrated across the Pacific Ocean, have now reached a total of 14 states here that we know of, including Florida and New York. Again, officials say these are trace amounts, minute amounts, no danger to people, but it is here and in the air. These reports only add to concerns over nuclear plant and overall radiation, radiation safety here at home and the systems the U.S. has in place to monitor radiation in the air, the water, even the food and milk supply. There are some glitches in those systems. The Japanese nuclear disaster has this EPA lab in Alabama on high alert, monitoring the air, the water, and samples of milk for any signs of radiation. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we're monitoring the air across the United States. But the EPA has conceded it's had problems with some of those monitors. On the West Coast, only half of them were fully functioning as the Fukushima plant in Japan began emitting radiation. Three monitors were out of service and others had to be double checked for potentially faulty data. And while the EPA claims this is no big deal, anti-nuclear activists disagree. An emergency radiation system should be working, and it is very problematic. The EPA system is largely non-functional during this period. All of Japan is a radiologically contaminated area. The order of magnitude of the problem that's been created by radiation in the 20th century. Today, man-made activities added up in total exceed the dose from natural radiation. Every increment that we add to that natural radiation will exact its price in human health. And human health with respect to some very miserable diseases such as the genetic disorders and heart disease and cancer. 50% of all cancers in the 20th century have been caused by ionizing radiation of the type we would call Low level. A series of meltdowns in the reactors at Fukushima Daiichi generated significant nuclear contamination. This is a world record. The first time ever have we got 100% liquefaction of a nuclear core. Two years ago, members of a government panel released their final report on the accident. It said a worker manually stopped the emergency cooling system for reactor 3 early on March 13th two days after the disaster. But the latest findings from Tokyo Electric Power Company show that the cooling system had already stopped functioning more than six hours before. The findings suggest that fuel rods started melting earlier than TEPCO officials believed. And more melted fuel would have dropped to the bottom of the containment vessel. That makes the removal of the fuel more difficult than expected. TEPCO officials also found more problems. After the accident, crews used fire engines to inject water into reactor 2. But the water may have reacted with the fuel inside to produce hydrogen, raising the temperature significantly. And that sped up the meltdown. Not only one cores, but three nuclear cores. This is a map of plutonium on the ground around Fukushima, up to 60 kilometers from the nuclear plant. As Japanese physicians are encouraging the evacuation of Tokyo, the government ignores them. And the nuclear industry goes on like nothing has happened. As children get sick and as people die, the media cooperates in misleading the public on the dangers of nuclear fallout. Until very recently, men working deep underground would take a canary with them in a cage. If the canary stopped singing and dropped dead, it was because they were more susceptible to bad air than the humans were. If the canary in the coal mine dropped dead, it was time to get out of there and right quick. A canary in a coal mine is a warning. Yes, a canary in a coal mine is a warning. So is four exploded nuclear plants. Here is your canary in a coal mine. Birds in Japan falling from the sky. Cross species 
unable to fly, unable to move their wings or legs. They can have a hard time chirping. They go into a seizure and die. The picture you see on the right, left one, the left tail feather is normal. The right bottom picture, it's the tails are mutated. Even when you pick these feathers out of the bird, they grow back mutated like this. And this is from uh, Noboru Nakamura, a researcher at the Yamshina Institute of uh, Orn Ornithology in, in Aitite Prefecture. And uh, Noboru has been catching these bush wobbler birds in nets for many years. And in 2011, something odd started to happen. The birds and their tail feathers started to become mutated. And he noticed this a thousand kilometers away from Fukushima. Even in Chernobyl, we see mutations among the bird population of contaminated areas. Well, here's another report from Chernobyl that just came out. In all the bird species around Chernobyl, the contaminated areas, their populations have, have greatly decreased. Well, it's saying it's a map of background radiation in the Chernobyl region and location of the study areas. And the farther you get away from this contamination, the less likelihood of them having reduced sperm counts. Dr. Dave DeSanti is the founder of the Institute for Bird Population in Point Reyes, California. After the radioactive cloud from Chernobyl passed over the U.S. West Coast in the spring of 1986, his research uncovered a severe die-off of young birds. Later, researchers Gould and Goldman duplicated his results with human mortality data. The young, the old, and those with weak immune systems were the main casualties. An estimated over 40,000 at all. I did as a result of that was um, I established the Institute for Bird Populations and the MAPS program, which you can see here on, the, on here in our newsletter that just came out, our newsletter this year. And it's a program of the same kind of misnetting that we did at Palomar Inn, in which we try to look at vital rates, productivity, and survival. But instead of having one station, now we've had as many as 500 stations in a year. Altogether, there have been over a thousand map stations established across the United States and southern Canada. And so I've always said, the next time something like this happens, we're ready to see if, if there's going to be any effect on the birds. So, certainly not that I'm pleased or anything about what might be coming our way, but um, it was a, the, the reproductive failure during that time caused a, a 63, 64% decrease in the number of young birds of all species, and as I say, in those species that had young in the nest right at the time the Chernobyl cloud came over and that iodine fell out, um, apparently 100% reproductive failure. Those, um, and the way we think it works is that a baby bird, when it hatches, looks like a solidified egg yolk or something. I mean, it hardly looks like a bird. It's a little naked creature, eyes closed. You can't even really tell it's a bird. Um, nine days later, that little creature can be flying out of the nest, fully feathered and certainly not grown. It's going to be three weeks dependent upon its parents to feed it until it learns the ways of the world and is on its own then. But still, the rate of development from that hatching to nine or ten days later, eleven days for a robin or something, um, a bigger bird, is, is really astounding. And, and the reason that development is so fast, or, or what facilitates it, of course, is the thyroid. And then, of course, the thyroid is where iodine goes to. It, it just picks up iodine. And that's what these these birds got. And, and they got it concentrated in those caterpillars that then grazed on the vegetation. Well, the thing about it is there's... Many bird species in Japan started to die 2012 and 2013 like these seagulls. 
Here are uh, guys cleaning up the beaches of dead seagulls. They're picking them up, throwing them in the back of garbage trucks. Then we got the raven. Here they're exhibiting the exact same symptoms as the, uh, the other species of birds. We have five million dead birds in Australia and New Zealand from Fukushima. Their migrational route goes from Australia and New Zealand up to Japan, to Alaska, to British Columbia, Canada, West Coast, back to California and down to Australia and New Zealand to breed. They, but that's not the only place they were found dead. They were find, found dead all across the ocean, from Alaska back down to New Zealand and Australia. It's just the start. First we saw the birds in Japan dying. Then we saw the birds in, over the Pacific Ocean dying. And now, late 2013, 2014, we're seeing the birds in US and Canada dying. joins us on this story tonight. And Alex, eagle experts are doing everything they can right now to try to save the lives of several more birds. That's absolutely right, Keith. There are three of them right now at a rehabilitation clinic, and biologists are trying to figure out exactly what's going on because the three birds have the same symptoms as other birds that passed away. Now, the latest bald eagle was found just last night in Farmington, but at this point, until more tests come back, no one is sure what's happening. All of them have been bald eagles. Just a look at them. Big, majestic, proud and terribly sick. It's pretty critical, and so we're doing everything we can to minimize stress and just to keep them as calm and, and comfortable as we possibly can. So all the birds that have been brought in um, have varying degrees of paralysis, um, weakness in the legs, weakness in the wings, um, and then very quickly moving into having tremors, and then um, full-blown seizures, and then as soon as the seizures start, that's pretty much it. You just feel for it. I mean, the, the bird clearly was injured or sick or something was wrong with it. Tyler Schulte and his father-in-law found a grounded bald eagle in Bountiful this past weekend. They wrapped it in a blanket, took it home, and called wildlife experts. That bird is this bird, now in the care of Erickson and her team. Last night, another bald eagle from Farmington was brought into the clinic. When the bird came in, he was exhibiting the same symptoms that we've been seeing, so um, we're, we're pretty certain this is part of the same illness we've been seeing throughout the course this past month. Tests for lead, possibly from shotgun shells and other birds the Eagles ate, came back negative. At this point, no one is sure why the birds are getting sick and dying. We're concerned just because it is something new. It's something that we don't know. Um, we have yet to ever see this quantity of birds coming in of one species in this short span of time. Now to a growing mystery tonight in the American West. An unknown illness is taking the lives of our treasured national symbol. In northern Utah, more than a dozen bald eagles have died this month alone. And now a team of researchers from across the country is working to figure out what is behind it. It's alarming. So far this month, 16 bald eagles have died from the same illness. Bald eagles are no longer an endangered species, but are still federally protected. It's a symbol of our country, too. The bald eagle is... It's just what America stands for. We are beginning tonight with a health warning urging you not to eat certain parts of anchovies, sardines, or crab that are caught in the Monterey Bay. Health officials say they can be toxic, dangerous to humans. More on what's happening and the animals that have already been killed it makes its way through the food chain into fish and then birds and then onto mammals. It starts to take its toll. It's already killed a number of birds and is now threatening to harm humans who aren't careful. More than a dozen have been found dead here in recent weeks under the pier at Seacliff State Beach. We see sort of an up uptick in the numbers that are dying on beaches. They typically will come in and kind of strand themselves and they have a hard time um, with moving and their head kind of flops around. Seabird biologist Hannah Nevin says it isn't just birds being affected. <laughs> 
taking a toll on California sea lions as well. They get disoriented. They head, you know, straight out towards Hawaii instead of their normal migratory route. Public Health Department issued a warning not to eat recreationally harvested shellfish, meaning mussels, clams, or whole scallops from the Monterey Bay. And then on Monday, there was an update advising consumers also not to eat the internal organs of commercially or recreationally caught anchovy, sardine, or crab coming from the bay. It can result in dizziness, vomiting, diarrhea, really bad things that humans don't want to get. The warning says in severe cases, the victim may experience a number of worrisome symptoms, including trouble breathing, confusion, seizures, coma, or death. Mass baby birds are dying in Iceland. National Geographic reports. They mention everything else but radiation, blaming it on global warming. But as we can see from 2011, there has been a huge spike in baby bird deaths. The ground is littered with baby birds. And this is up in Iceland. 